Welcome back to another video about the art of Pokemon and today's subject is Lantern and I'm going to be looking at the 26 artworks that have appeared on Lantern cards um, primarily in Japanese. I mean, this is this is all Japanese prints except for this one uh, which I've had to substitute an English print for because my copy that I ordered from Japan um, got sent back to Japan, lost in the post, I don't know, but it's apparently on its way back to me, but I wasn't going to wait for it to eventually turn up or not, so I'm doing the video anyway. Um, anyone who's been here before will know I have no production values, I'm using natural daylight and just me rambling about Pokemon cards. Um, obviously Lantern is water electric and therefore there are some water cards, some electric cards, Nearly all of the big artists in Pokemon have had a shot at Lantern and often when the concept is being approached um, Lantern is a fish Pokemon that has uh, these balls of light on its head and often you'll, you'll find um, the concept is built around how the light is, is affecting the card and uh, the depths of the ocean. So uh, let's have a look and see how the different artists have uh, tackle this. So what I'm gonna do is bring the camera in, try and keep this video quite as short as I can, but there's a lot of cards to uh, to go through. So uh, let's see, how's the best way to do this? Um, I think I'm actually gonna have to pull them out. So we'll start with Ken Sugimori's card from February of 2000 from Neo Genesis, or in Japanese, it's gold, silver to a new world. And it's the standard image of Lantern in the dark depths with light. It's very competent, it's very Sugimori, it's very good. Um, I will try and be brief on each of these. So the next one is Himamaru, uh, Kagamaru Himeno, doing Awakening Legends, uh, November 2000, which was near Revelation in English. And Himamaru hadn't quite developed her style yet. Uh, this is quite a simple card for her. Uh, but it's very good, it's a nice little card, simple enough. The third card that came out was by Miki Tanaka. I'm not a fan of Miki Tanaka or any of the primitivism artists, the naive artists such as um, Yukika Baba or Kamiya, but um, this doesn't appeal to me. It's light, light um, lantern. Lantern is lantern also in Japanese, and I just don't see anything particularly interesting about that card. That was Darkness to Light, yeah. Uh, the fourth one is a Japanese exclusive by Etsuya Hotori. Uh, this is Lieutenant Surge's, or Lieutenant Surge's, um, lantern, and is incredibly boring. <laughs> um, but still, I quite like it. You know, it's very, um, they've done a very, very blue lantern. The color is quite different from how other people really have tackled it. It seems very blue, blue and yellow. But nothing much to say about that card, because there's not a lot going on in it. Um, that was in the VS of July 2001. The next one is Yukimori. Um Let me just get the non-hollow out as well. Uh, so there was a hollow and a non-hollow version. And as I say, this is the English one at the moment, but there will I will be getting the Japanese one. And this was from Wind from the Sea, which is Aquapolis in May of 2002 and Yukimori you really can't compare against anyone else because it's a completely different process. Um, it's not often Yukimori had to do a water effect but uh, I don't know how they achieved this image but it's a nice enough card. Quite simple but um, it's Yukimori. I like Yukimori a lot. A little, ooh, nice swirl here. Yeah. Um, so that's all I can say about that one. Um, in the next, the next one was also from Wind from the Sea, um, and this is Mitsuhiro Arita, who is obviously my favourite Pokemon artist. Now Arita has gone for the first complex uh, depiction of Lantern with a very uh, interesting background of undersea ruins being lit by Lantern's light wall on his head, and that is just brilliant art. Uh, at the time that was incredibly comp complex piece of artwork uh, 
Pokemon cards were a lot simpler back in those days, so this one really stood out, as did a lot of Arita's art around this period, as being taking the complexity of backgrounds up to another level. And again, that's from May of 2002. There was an alternate art of that that came out as a Japanese exclusive in McDonald's promos. Um, it's less about the background and more about the light and how it is uh, lighting up Lantern's face here. I think it's a lovely card and even the simplistic background is really interestingly done. Um, I love this. So yeah, very very strong cards, both of the Arita cards. Uh, the next card that came out was in the Aqua Deck Kit of October 2003 and is by uh, Jungo Suzuki. I don't know this artist. There was one, a lot of the artists at this, for this set were not uh, artists that they then used again. Um, I don't like it. It's a computer generated image. It's, it just doesn't appeal to my eyes. So I'm not going to say much about that. Um, then Aya and Kazube has done a very nice card here. She often does very dark cards with this sort of scratchy pen work. Um, and Landon is in the dark with its light and is seemingly very happy. And I like that card very much. It's a very typical Kazube card. And that was in Undone Seal of January 2004. Um, the next card is by Kusajima. Hajima Kusajima. And this one is from the Feraligate Constructed deck, so it's a little bit harder to find the Japanese print because it's from a deck. Uh, it was in Unseen Forces in English. And it's almost like a, a woodblock print or something from the 17th century. Um, I don't like it. Sorry. Don't, I just don't like that card very much. I think it looks ugly. Um, the next one is by Himeno again. Now, this one's a hollow in Japanese. It wasn't a hollow in English. It was in Mirage Forest in Japanese and in uh, Legend Maker in, in English. And as a hollow, it's just lovely. And it's a clean bit of Himeno artwork. Um, she's just, she's so selective in her lines. Um, but if you, I mean, if you, it seems simple, but it's not actually. And if you look at the way that the paler blue of the fins and on, on Lantern's forehead contrasts with the dark of the body and the shading, it really, it, it works beautifully. That is a wonderful card, especially as a hollow. Um, right. Next one is Midori Harada. And this was... Um, I think it's textually exactly the same as the previous one by Kazube. It was effectively a reprinted card with different artwork. And it came in the uh, World Championship pack, or EX Power Keepers, of July 2007. And I don't like it at all. That's a rather. Um, the next one is by Fukuda. Um, sorry, it's the English one, hiding behind. I'll just put that back. Um, this is Temple of Anger, or Legends Awakened. Um, very cartoony Fukuda there. Um, I quite like what they've done with the background. It's clean, it's bright, it's happy. Um, yep, very nice. Fukuda for me is a polarising artist. I either really like their stuff or I really don't. And that's a really like one. Uh, the next one is Koiki Saitu from Cry from the Mysterious, also of March 2008, as the previous one. Um, Cry from the Mysterious was in also a part of Legends Awakened. And it's a very simple, clean bit of Koiki Saitu cartoon art. It's not very exciting, but uh, Lantern's actually out of the water in this one. But it's very well done. Koiki's always good. Very few Koiki Saitu cards that I don't like. Um, most of them I absolutely love. The next one is from Reviving Legends uh, by Sui. Um, I can't stand this. I, I, I quite like the background, but um, no, this is this is Sui being 
so extreme it looks demented um, with a bloodshot eye like that and no I'm afraid I do not like it there is a um, a mirror foil of that uh, as legends cards in Japanese had mirror foils but I don't have that and I also don't have the mirror foil of this one which is the um, what were they called primes or something no yeah whatever they're called these things um, this is now who is this by this is by Hokozoki Hokozoki someone let's see there's the artist there um, I don't like it sorry don't like it sorry for all the dust um, Hokozoki where are we now Mizui Mizui so we're on to Mizui and Mizui was from Spiral Force Plasma Freeze of December 2012 that's yeah, an interesting card actually with a sort of suggestion that it's under ice that's cracking above um, Mizui bubbles down here you see Mizui often does little bubbles um, yeah very nice card not particularly memorable but I, I like the, the the yellow effect of the electric electricity explosion in the uh, top right contrasting with the dark corner down here so some thought has gone into that card the next card is by Mahu and is very nice actually it's it's very like the next one which is Kanaka Eo but this is this is almost super Eo in, in its um, cutesy cartoony way um, but this is Mizui from sorry Mahu from Tidal Storm which was part of Primal Clash and it came out in December of 2014 it's quite simple strong bold lines very nice uh, the next one is Kanaka <laughs> and this is a Japanese exclusive from the card gym tournament promo series um, and it's a typical piece of AO very happy cartoony I like it I like the the, the bubbles and the light and the, the way you've got this spotlight effect over Lantern's face very nice uh, the next card is by Fukuda again it's another Fukuda and it's from collection Moon which was the start of Sun and Moon in December of 2016. I don't like it as much as the previous Fukuda, but it's still very nice. There's a similar sort of background to how he approached it before. Um, yeah, I like the fact that um, there's a sense of movement through the water here with the disturbance behind uh, Lantern's tail. Um, then there was a reprint of Kazube's uh, card from earlier. This was in um, Champions Road of May 2018, but we've already looked at that artwork, so we're not going to look at it again. Then we've got another Kensugamori, which came out in Superburst Impact, which was Lost Thunder in September of 2018. And it's not as interesting as Ken's first one from 20 years previously, but um, it's it's okay. Uh, the next one is by Otomami. Came out in Alter Genesis of September 2019. And I love this card. I love this card very much. Um, big fan of Otomami. And uh, yeah, very dramatic. Slightly photorealistic in a way, but um, quite gentle in the face. And uh, yeah, I like that a lot. So moving on to the next page for the last few. Um, we have got uh, Kimura. Now, Kimura, very, very beautiful. Kimura is a great artist. Gentle uh, brushwork, uh, nice line work as well, and the lighting is beautiful. So, that's Kimura from Shield in December of 2019 in the Sword and Shield base. Uh, the next card is by Uratsuka. I don't know this artist uh, well enough to say anything about them. It's quite a graphic style, blocky colours with the white outline around Lantern. Um, it was also reprinted here in Start Deck 100 later in that year. And that is that one. The last two, uh, this one is by Aoki and I looked at it in my Aoki video recently. Um, very interesting uh, the way they've done the light here 
it's almost like uh, looking up through the water and you can see the sun shining down and Lantern's light ball is, is uh, mimicking the sun. Um, they've done very nice work here. It's always very joyful Lantern, very happy Pokemon living in the pitch dark at the bottom of the ocean. And then the final card is by Aspara from Raging Surf of September 23 and that was in Paldean Fates in English and um, it's very good yeah um, I like Aspara's work a lot uh, clean lines interesting background atmosphere it's a little bit flat in the colors in the palette of the colors but I think that's really good work with just a hint of daylight or something up above um, so it's moving from the light to the dark very nicely um, so that is a look at all the lantern cards it's a consistently um, commissioned Pokemon. There's always lantern cards. There's never a break of more than a year or so between lantern cards. So uh, obviously the Pokemon company do like it as a Pokemon and think it's a card that needs to be represented a lot. So I rushed through that, I'm afraid, but that's the best I can do in the time allowed.